Hi guys, it's Karen Batty coming to you from my home um, to talk to you about the fine art of working from home. I think given the subject matter, it's totally okay the fact that you're looking at my headboard in my bedroom. Okay, so um, for those of you who don't know, I've been uh, running a home-based business for 24 years. Um, so I have worked from home. When I started, my kids were four, two, and newborn. Husband was a, was a firefighter, so he kind of had unreliable hours. And so I have worked from home in all sorts of situations with um, infants and toddlers, with teenagers, um, and then one-on-one -on -one as, as adults. So I just want to share with you some, some tips that might help you if you are new and maybe struggling uh, working from home. The first thing I want you to think about is your time is like your money. If you don't decide what to do with it, it'll be gone and you'll wonder where the heck it all went. And when it comes to people who are struggling to work from home, I've noticed three tendencies. There's one tendency, that's the person who can never get down to work because the kids need this, the laundry needs, being, it needs to be done, there's dishes in the sink. Then there's the people who never turn it off. They get headlong into work and everything's gotta get done and that inbox need to be emptied before they ever turn it off. And guess what? Most of the time, our inbox are never going to be empty. The third tendency is the person who's both. They have a hard time turning it on and once they've turned it on, they have a hard time turning it off. Well, the good news is there are strategies out there for all of us and here's the really exciting news. For those of you who know me, you might be surprised to hear that I've run a home-based business for all these years. Even more surprised if you ever knew the extent of it behind the scenes. Because, you know, if you know me well, you know that I'm probably, I don't come across as the most organized person in the world. I'm kind of always running a few minutes late. I've kind of always forgotten to bring one thing with me. And guess what? That's all true. So if you're thinking, oh, working from home, being super structured and organized, if you're thinking, I don't know if I can handle that, just know that if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so strategy number one is have a family meeting once a week to determine the basic schedule for everybody in the week. If you got ones that are too little to be part of that, then the adults in the home meet together. But if your kids are even at, you know, four years of age or more, have them in on this discussion so that everybody knows what the important things that are going on in each other's work days for that week. It might be hard to schedule too far out, but you can take it one week at a time. If, if, if one spouse has Zoom meetings, you know, a few days a week at certain times, everybody should know about it. And the other spouse has certain Zoom meetings and, and things that are etched in stone, deadlines that have to have happen. Everybody needs to know about it. And guess what? Even the four-year-old gets to have or should have some things that are as important to them as our deadlines are to us. Because if there's one thing I've learned from all the stuff that's going on in the world, a lot of what we thought was important maybe is kind of as important as a, a three-year-old drawing on the uh, sidewalk with chalk. Okay, so everybody gets to choose something uh, in the family that's important to them and that the entire family um, honors as a priority. Okay. Next, have a workspace. It doesn't need to be a full office, but it needs to be a space that, that you work. And then, equally as important, have non-workspace in the home. That's a place where no work happens. And this is hard now with cell phones, right? Because we can take it with us, it's like a roving office. But there should be places of honor in the home where no work gets done. Maybe it's the dinner, and probably a few places. Maybe it's the dinner table, maybe it's the family room. If you have a smaller home, maybe it's a portion of the family room, like, you know, the couch and the chair. These are non-work spaces. Maybe it's the bedroom. No work getting done there. Whatever it is, but decide together and then honor it. And then, like I said, time is like money. If you don't decide what to do with it, it'll be gone before you know it. So decide what you're going to do with your time. You got kids? What do they need? Do they need help with their, their, with their schoolwork, you know, uh, working remotely or learning remotely? Schedule those times first. What if you've got younger kids? 
what are they going to do while you are working? If there's two spouses in the household and you have kids, one has an important deadline that's on this particular day. If the kids all of a sudden act up, then you know you decide ahead. Okay, you're it. You're the one who, who drops everything to take care of this and vice versa. I always found it really helpful to have special activities that the kids could only do when I was working. Okay, like Play-Doh. <laughs> like certain special games. I had a bin in my office that were special things that they could only use while I was working and they had to use it quietly. So they knew I was working because we explained it ahead. Mommy needs to work so that we can have, you know, fun activities and have money for things like food and shelter. Okay. So while I'm working, you guys can play with these things, but you have to play quietly. So I found because these special um, toys were only things they got to use while I was working, oh, they were so excited. Yeah, they kept, they kept quieter. Also, lots of praise when the kids actually are, let you work and play with their things quietly. After you get the work done that you set out to do, praise them, thank them, and then say, oh, you know what? I used to say to my kids, because you let me work, we now have money to buy sidewalk chalk. Oh back when we used to all go to the store together, we would then pick up sidewalk chalk for 99 cents and we'd come home and use sidewalk chalk. So the kids didn't associate my business as that's something that, take, that takes mommy away from us so we can't have fun. They associated the business with, ah, now because mom worked for a little while, we get to go out and get sidewalk chalk and now we get to color and have this great family time. So anytime we did anything that was fun, going out for ice cream, going on a bike ride, anything we did, I tied it into, because you guys let me do this, we now have the resources to do this. So they saw the business as something that was helpful to them. They had skin in the game, so they wanted the business to go well. Um, and I didn't expect them to be quiet for hours and hours, little pockets of time. Which brings me to my next thing, set your office hours. And when you're working from home, if you've got young kids, it might not be hours, okay? It, it's probably going to be pockets of time. It's almost easier to go to work and just work, come home and just be home. But when you're working from home, the lines are all blurred. And they kind of, and as much as you'd like to just sit down and do one thing at a time, it's not always possible. So I used to look at my day. Some days I got up earlier before everybody else to get things done. But I'm more of a night owl. So a lot of the times my best office hours were from 10 p.m. to midnight a couple times a week. You know, uh, as a young parent, you're going to be tired. But you know what? I function better at night. So never usually more than twice a week. But twice a week, man, it was my catch-up time. And it was my time that was uninterrupted. So find those pockets of uninterrupted time for you. Where can those be? Do you want to get up a few minutes earlier? Do you want to stay up a few minutes later? And then um, setting those office hours in between when the kids are doing their homework, when the babies are napping, things like that. Um, and definitely doing things when you know the kids will be occupied. Okay. And here's another tip when my kids were younger and I needed to make phone calls back when all we had was the telephone and all you could do on the telephone was talk. You couldn't actually text text on it. I used to wear something. I had an apron, my Pamper Jeff apron. I put it on my kids knew mom was working. So when they would come up because, oh, this one took a toy from me. They saw me wearing the apron and they would stop and be like, oh, mom's working. Okay. And again, because they associated my work with all the good things of life, like sidewalk chalk and ice cream, they wanted me to be successful. So I found that by wearing that apron, it could be a hat, it could be a boa, it could be whatever you want. But just, you know, say to your kids, when I'm wearing this, that's because I'm at work. Um, another thing that worked like a charm for me was um, I hung up just a simple piece of paper with the numbers one, two, three, four, and five on it. And I would play with my kids. We'd have our morning together and then I'd say, okay, mom's got to work. Now there are five important phone calls I need to make. If you guys are very good, we're going to get you set up with a movie that, that they all decided together they would watch. And while you're watching that movie, if you guys let me make these five phone calls, we're going to go for a bike ride this afternoon. 
And I, and I, seriously, my kids were like two, four, and six at the time. Brendan um, got on the back of my bike. We had a little, uh, little seat on the back for him. And I would hang one, two, three, four, and five. And so every time I made a call, I would cross off a number. So when they wanted to know, is mom almost done? They wouldn't come, hey, mom, are you done? Are you done? Are you done? They tiptoe down the hall, led by Aaron, and go, oh, she's on call number three. She only has two left. Yay. And then they'd go back down and they'd watch more of their movie. Now, some days all I got done was the fine call, five calls, but some days I'd get through one, two, three, four, and I'd be like, oh, she's so quiet. So I would just keep working and not cross that last number off till they started, till the natives started getting restless. And then they'd be like, one more call. And I could tell they were kind of on the edge. I'd be like, all right, I'll cross off that last number. Another thing that I found super helpful is getting my kids to be helpful in my business. I got them thinking, even though half the time they really couldn't be of any assistance, but I got them thinking they were helping me finish soon. Okay, guys, I need to do this, this, I need to get this, this, and this done. Hey, can you stamp my catalogs? Oh my gosh, you should have seen the stamps. They were all over the place, but guess what? Who cares? As long as my name gets on there someplace. So they would be stamping catalogs while I was finishing other work. Afterwards, I would say, thank you so much. You guys have helped me, you know, with my business. And that means we can afford whatever, you know, and praise them for helping. They feel helpful. They're excited about that. And then again, reward it with some family time. Because kids, more than ever, I think, more than they want stuff, they want time together. And then when you're on, you're on. And when you're off, off. To this day, when I go to do something in my garden, I don't take my cell phone with me. And it's so funny because people on my team say, you know, you can take it with you. You know, you can text really quickly. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm not doing it. Okay. Another thing, which is easy for a pampered chef, but doesn't always um, come to mind for other people, plan your meals. Meal time. A lot of time, um, you know, you're getting your work done and you're trying to have meal family time, and all of a sudden it's like, who's going to make dinner? Well, uh, when my kids were little, I took two days once a week. Usually it was Sunday afternoons when I did what I was what I called my power cooking, and I would spend about two to three hours and I would make meals. This did two things. First of all. If you are like me and you're trying to stay out of the grocery stores because of COVID and you want to keep your exposure a little low, you can do major shopping, plan it all ahead, okay? It saves time, it saves money, okay? Um, I did this when my kids were little to save time and it incidentally saved a lot of money. So um, one of my days would be chicken and I would roast chicken and then I would pull the chicken apart and I would make chicken pot pies and chicken this and chicken that and chicken pasta dishes and and I would probably make at least you know uh, six or eight meals and I would freeze them all we'd eat one that night and then um, on those days that were super busy when things just got out of hand and all of a sudden it's like it's 6 30 we have no idea what we're having for dinner I could just pull something out of the freezer or most every day I just pulled something out of the, the freezer early and then it would be defrosted by the time dinner came along um, another day I would pick ground beef and then another day, and you know, usually during the ground beef day was also when I would make a bunch of um, uh, meatless meals as well and freeze those. So plan the meals, make them in bulk because obviously doubling a batch of cookies only takes about two minutes longer than making a single batch. You prep once, you clean once, only have two batches instead of one. So, um, and if you're, if you're thinking oh, that sounds too overwhelming, well, anytime you're making one meal, just make two, just double it every time. But before dinner is served, take the second portion and stick it in your refrigerator or freezer so your kids, if they're teenagers, don't go eating it all. Yes, yeah, stick it in the freezer. They're not gonna defrost it and eat it that quickly on you. Another thing that has worked really well for me is using a timer. So we've done our family uh, planning, we've etched out, we've, get, we've honored the important things um, to everybody in the family. And then you've got your work, your work hours cut out for you. Well, all of a sudden it's like, if you have a pocket of time to get something done, I would always set a timer to end five minutes before my work time. So when that timer went off, it's like, okay, I got five minutes to tie up these loose ends. 
And um, that's, that was really helpful for me because if you're like me and you get so bogged down in something, you lose track of time, you kind of, that timer can really help bring you back and stay on track. And the other thing is if you're a perfectionist, because I have a tendency sometimes to be a perfectionist about some things. And then I, then I thought to myself, you know, perfection does not exist. It's, 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 it's an illusion. <laughs> There's always something that could be better, right? So here's the thing. I made the new perfection getting something done in a timely manner rather than the product itself being perfect. So what was perfect was it got done at the perfect time. So beat the clock came my new perfection. I would decide ahead of time what's a reasonable amount of time to get this thing done. And if it was an hour, if it was two hours, if it was 15 minutes, whatever it was, I decided ahead of time, what was a reasonable amount to get this thing done well? And then I would stick with that time. So I would always set the timer for a few minutes ahead. So then I had five to 10 minutes to polish this up and make the prettiest it can be. And then boom. And one of my favorite quotes is done is better than perfect. I don't know if I made that up or not, but I'm, <laughs> I don't know, but I, I stick with it. Done is better than perfect and done on time. And, and what I mean by on time is not when the boss says it needs to be done, but when I say it's reasonable that I should spend this much time on this project and it should be done well so that I have time for my family. Okay. That's the perfect time then. Not work, 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 work up until the last minute that this needs to be submitted. It's no, spend the time, honor the project, get it done as well, but then honor other things in your life too, like your family. Okay, and you know, with all that's going on in the world, I think in a way it really reminds us, you know, what's important. And work is important, but it isn't the only thing. Um, but of course our work is important. It's meaningful to us, hopefully, and it's a means to, to serve our families and our communities, uh, both financially and with whatever work we do. So, um, so yeah, honoring that and, and allowing, allowing imperfection to be okay. You know, like I said, perfection does not exist. Um, but I hope when you're at home during these times, that, that you have found some joy in it, that you have found some, some sparks of, oh, wow, look at this. Because I'm home during this time, I get to also be here for this. And um, I hope this little bit has, has um, been helpful. If you've got questions for me that are specific to your situation, let me know. Um, because over my 24 years with Pampered Chef, part of what I do is I've trained a lot of other people to work from home. And I've worked with people to find solutions that work for them in their situation. So if you've got a, 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 a snag or something that you wish you had a solution for, feel free to reach out for me. I'd love to talk with you and um, find a way to, to help you master that fine art of working from home. Have a great night, everybody. Stay well, stay healthy.